Cars, trains, and maybe even planes could be powered by hydrogen someday. There's a lot of benefits to hydrogen as an energy carrier, but there's also significant drawbacks. So let's discuss why it's important to decarbonization, as it plays a role in reducing emissions in farming, industry, and transportation. A little bit about hydrogen if you're not familiar. Hydrogen's primary use right now is in the production of fertilizers, specifically ammonia, and the use in the petroleum industry. Ammonia is one of the primary reasons that crop yields still increase year over year. Hydrogen is primarily created through a system called steam methane reform, then the Haber-Bosch process is used to create ammonia. Essentially, you pull out hydrogen from methane and then create ammonia using nitrogen in the air. Welcome to my chemical engineering degree. Hydrogen is also also used in a number of other smaller processes. We can think of hydrogen as a color spectrum, defining where the hydrogen comes from. Black is for coal, gray is for methane, blue is for methane with carbon capture, turquoise is for methane pyrolysis, pink, purple, or red are different variants of nuclear, green is for renewables, and white is naturally occurring. There's a few other colors, but this is all we're going to cover today. When we look at fossil fuel-based hydrogen, coal is the highest cost and produces the most CO2. Our standard steam methane reform is why natural gas is nice and cheap. Adding on carbon capture obviously increases the price. Turquoise hydrogen is quite expensive right now, but has the benefit of producing solid carbon blocks rather than gas. Nuclear-based hydrogen is the cheapest option for low-carbon hydrogen production right now, and it gets even better with subsidies. While green hydrogen is still quite expensive, but it can be competitive with subsidies still. And new technology is coming out every day to mitigate these costs. There isn't a ton of data on white hydrogen right now, but if we find significant reserves, it could dramatically decrease the prices. The purpose of subsidies is to encourage development to bring down future costs, and we've seen this happen with renewables over the last few decades. So this is certainly an area that we should move our subsidies towards. And this is usually where I start to make the pro-nuclear argument, as pink hydrogen, at least right now, seems to be one of the cheapest hydrogen producing options with low carbon. But there's still a lot of problems with hydrogen. Changing out our fertilizer system to low carbon hydrogen would be pretty easy since the feedstock is the same. So that deals with much of the agriculture based emissions. But what about transportation and manufacturing? Well, that's where the problems really start. Hydrogen is, well, annoying. Because it's so small, it's really hard to put in a pipeline, as it causes a symptom called hydrogen embrittlement in steel. It means pipes have to be specifically designed to stop this, all of which increase costs and means we can't really use existing infrastructure without a lot of refurbishment. Hydrogen also has high energy density on a mass basis, but on a volume basis, it's quite low, meaning it has to be pressurized to like 700 bar to put it in something like a car. This is one of the reasons my other videos focus on power, because it's such an easy win for reducing carbon emissions. The hydrogen economy, not so much. You can see how all of these challenges would make it hard to set up hydrogen filling stations across the country because you would need to pressurize the vessels in order to hold the hydrogen with special materials that make sure it doesn't cause embrittlement. But there are some solutions to this problem, like making green hydrogen at site as needed, since you just need water and electricity. I did this in grade eight, though it's a bit of a costly option. But after chatting a little bit with the channel Decarbonize, those high costs may be short-lived with systems like dedicated green hydrogen offshore wind farms. Mixing hydrogen and natural gas can mitigate pipe embrittlement. Producing blue hydrogen at hubs, i.e. cities, can cut down on transportation. But what I personally advocate for and think is the best solution for the problems at present is the use of ammonia. As ammonia is much more volumetrically dense, it can be used as a fuel, and transportation and distribution make it a lot more similar to traditional fueling. It does, however, also have its own drawbacks. In future videos, I'll delve deeper into the decarbonization solutions into transportation and manufacturing, and how hydrogen, along with nuclear power, will play a pivotal role in that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and follow me for more if you're interested.